Of the street, and his taxi cab company was about two blocks up uh, across the street from the Holiday Inn. It's an it's a ice house now, a, a stop and go now. But that was Bellinger's uh, cab company uh, up, uh, up there, about two blocks up. So the and and once again, the uh, soldiers, uh, or the, the fighters of the Alamo, would have been coming up this way, and this is where they would have been killed in here, uh, and their bodies burned pretty much where the expressway is on both sides. Of Gonzales Road. And, and look up the street and see how, look how high the street gets as you go further east. It's going uphill. And, uh, and keep in mind, when it was storm real bad, this whole place underwater. I mean, that's how bad the flooding was uh, in this particular area. So uh, eventually, and I may ask for some people to help me out, uh, at least with Spanish, eventually I'm going to get a bunch of black folk together and a bunch of Mexican Americans together, and we're going to dress in the costumes that the black soldiers used to wear, and we're going to celebrate Santa Ana's black Mexican troops, okay. and we're going to probably put on a performance here with the original uniforms. I got somebody in Mexico going to help me make the original uniforms. We'll have to get some black folks dressed up in them, and maybe we can borrow a few horses every now and then, and we're going to have that celebration. Uh, I, I got a couple of black uh, people from uh, Puerto Rico who speak Spanish, and they already volunteered. We'll take care of the Spanish. Just bring the black folk. And I said, okay. So uh, we're, at some point, we are going to do a celebration of Santa Ana's uh, black Mexican soldiers. Now, you can imagine that's not going to go over too well with the people at the Alamo. But that's too bad. That's just, I'm going to tell the history the way it was, and if they don't like it, well, that's too bad. Um, so we're going to deal, deal with that uh, at some point soon. I'm working on doing uh, uh, the project for that, and uh, that should happen within a year or so. So uh, eventually, you, those uniforms you have in your packet, you're going to see some black folk down here dressed up just like that. And hopefully we'll get the, some of Puerto Rican brothers and some Hispanic brothers to give the orders in Spanish uh, to kill the, those guys that are running out of the wall. And so we'll do a different reenactment of what actually happened uh, at this site. Uh, and it's going to be very, very cool. So, and I, I don't know, somebody help me out. Let's see, they might say, adelante. Muerte de, de, de gringos. Okay? In Spanish, mean we're going to kill the gringos. Uh, or the slave owners. Because they were very, those black troops were very opposed to slavery. And they would have been told, they would have been told by their commanders, you're killing guys who are, slave, who are slavers. Now, they may not own slaves individually, but they believed in slavery. Okay? And I never made the claim that all of the Alamo defenders owned slaves. All of them didn't. But what, but what were they doing? They were defending the institution of slavery. And so that, that's what we're going to talk about. Okay? So this is called Sunset Station. It's also called St. Paul Square, and that's why it's got two names. One is to honor the black presence, and the other is because the train station actually stopped there. Bellinger got off that train. Um, Thurgood Marshall, I believe, got off that train. He's a Supreme Court Justice. He spoke at St. Paul Methodist Church, by the way, um, right after the Brown versus Board Education decision was made in 1954. He spoke at the church right there. Um, and uh, several other famous black people came through here. Uh, CUNY, a guy named CUNY, a very famous black educator. His, uh, he was very famous and his uh, funeral train uh, actually drove to San Antonio. His body was uh, lied in state at, uh, at the church. 
and uh, then he was put on the train and sent to Galveston for burial. Uh, but there's a street that Denver, Denver Heights called Cuny Way, and it's named. That's why it's named after him. Uh, so that, a lot of people don't know that. That's an, uh, another, another example of that. Uh, Cuny Elementary was named after him. It's now Friendship Baptist Church. Okay, so there, there's another piece of history. So, um, by the way, Pancho Villa also came through here during the Mexican Revolution. Uh, if you look at Pancho Villa's birth certificate, it says what? Mulatto. So his, oh. gra his grandmother was, was black. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> Pancho Villa actually stored weapons for the Mexican Revolution on Nolan Street because he used the train to hide the guns and stuff here. He'd unload them from the train there a little bit further down the track where Nolan is, where the Budweiser place is at, right there. Unload the weapons, wait for the orders to put them back on the train, they take them to Mexico. And a lot of stuff happened around here nobody really knows about. It. Utterly amazing stuff. Okay, we're gonna go to the next stop now. Um,